Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Luce Rato. I'm the Permanent Development Director for Wilson County. And uh, we are here to speak about the Bellis uh, Ranch. It's a proposed subdivision that has just been submitted to us. I know a lot of you have questions and concerns and we wanna hear you guys. We wanna know if there's anything that we could work with. The developers have been nice enough to try to come to a compromise. Us as a county and who we sit on the review board, we are not the whole community. You know, so we can't ask for certain stuff. We want to know what do the people want? What do the people, what can we work with for you guys? Not what's going to work for them or just us. So this is a reason that we're holding this public forum. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Brady Bags here. Representative. Representative of the developer. We also have our commissioners here, Commissioner King, uh, our county clerk, Crystal, Evelyn is our county assistant attorney, and our other commissioners, Commissioner Perdola and Mr. Scott Aiken. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let him speak. We're gonna let him introduce the pro project, show you what he's got going on, and once he's done, we will take questions from the public. Uh, try to keep it, we're keeping it to three minutes just because there are a lot of people and, you know, we want to keep her cool and calm and, you know, have input. So that's what we're looking for. So that being said, I'm going to hand the mic over to uh, Mr. Brady Bags to speak on the project. Ready? All right. Can everybody hear me? All right. Well, good afternoon. My name is Brady Bags. I'm a Wilson County Reb resident, and I'm also a um, representative of the H Care. I've got our engineers, uh, Dan Ryan and Priscilla Flores is here. Uh, and then we also brought our uh, attorney, Mr. Ryan Harper, if he can help us answer any questions. Um, I thought I'd start out by just giving <clears throat> a brief overview of the project in itself. And then I guess after that, we could just open it up for questions. Um, so. For starters, I mean, everybody probably knows already, but the project's located um, on the east side of Highway 181. It is north of uh, Floresville, but just south of County Road 320. The property is approximately 255 acres. Um, it is located outside the ETJ of Floresville, and obviously it falls inside the Wilson County jurisdiction. Um, we have a master plan, I guess, um, to show and. I don't know if anybody could see it. We were hoping to have an, an easel. Um, you know, we're planning approximately 913 uh, lots with the typical lot size being 40 feet wide by 150 feet uh, deep. As you can see from the master plan, we're, we're also providing a main collector road that goes, that's conveying all of our traffic in and out of the subdivision directly to uh, Highway 181. Highway 181 will be the primary access point. We'll have a main collector to that. Um, however, we do have a secondary access point on, uh, in Shannon Ridge, considered a carry, carry lane. Um, we're not thinking that any of our traffic will utilize carry lane. It's just so much more inconvenient for them to go that path than the direct shot that we're providing to 181, but we do need secondary access for emergency services vehicles. Um, moving on to the utilities, our water provider is Oak Hills Water Supply Corporation. They have 
really, really good water in up and up along 181. They have a huge water main uh, on our side of Highway uh, 181. We already have an agreement with them in place to, to serve uh, all of our 913 lots. Once we provide and once we construct our internal water network inside our subdivision, we're going to have more than adequate fire and domestic needs for all of our residents. So I know that has been a big question in the media or social media. So <clears throat> our electric provider is Phelps. And early conversations with Phelps is that they would be able to service, uh, especially since we're planning multiple phases with this subdivision. We're not going to be able to, to build <clears throat> 900 lots all at once. It'll be many years and many different phases. And Phelps, that they, they could work with, this, especially on the planning. And if they need any upgrades, they'll be over, over time. The sewer, uh, we're going to handle on-site sewer by uh, treatment facility. The um, treatment facility will utilize a discharge permit from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, which is TCEQ. TCEQ sets the standards for the entire state of Texas for treatment facilities. Um, the permit from TCEQ is going to allow us to treat our, sanit our resident sanitary sewer and discharge the clean treated water uh, into Sand Pit Creek. So uh, we set our intentionally set our treatment facility levels much higher than TCEQ requirements. Matter of fact, we're probably much higher than most all discharge permits in our watershed. Um, our permit is, is even higher than the city of Floresville's treatment facility requirements. Um, so, you know, in, in summary, where our project is north of Floresville, it's on the east side of 181, south of County Road 320. You know, we're proposing, you know, roughly 900 lots on 255 acres. Um, we're going to have adequate water, sewer, electricity for the entire subdivision. Um, it's located in Floresville. I know there's been a lot of jurisdictions that were reached out to, but the, the residents will be Floresville ISD. And, and most importantly, I mean, the subdivision is going to provide in the necessary attainable housing <clears throat> for our future in Wilson County. I mean, it's growing, whether we want to admit it or not, any subdivision that is in the surrounding of San Antonio has seen this growth. Matter of fact, Floresville may be one of the last um, few, few towns around San Antonio. Everybody else has had this, this amount of growth for the last five or 10 years. So it's, it is coming. Um, with that, um, I guess that's all I really have to say. If you will, we'll stick around for, for your questions. My name is Alina Berlinga. I am I'm a resident of Wilson County. I live in Shannon Ridge off of Killarney. Um, as you can see, this courtroom is packed with other property owners. Um, I'm one of about a thousand in the nearby property of nearby, nearby property owners that are deeply concerned about this development and the developer. Keep in mind that this project will have numerous negative consequences for not just the properties adjacent to it, but our entire community. Due to the chemical processes carried out in wastewater treatment plants. Not only are they a source of highly offensive odors, but the chemicals and noxious fumes are extremely hazardous to humans and the environment. Once this developer finishes destroying our peaceful country living and property values, they will pack up their bags and abandon the wastewater treatment facility. What happens when usage is doubled and maybe even tripled because of the number of people crammed into these 900 homes? with all the flushing of toilets and showers and laundry and dishwasher, dishwater, have, have you anticipated this amount of usage, overusage? What happens when this system is overloaded? What happens when there is an explosion due to the mishandling of any chemicals at this facility? What will this, how will this fit into the county's hazard mitigation plan, which we just talked about this morning in commissioner's court? How will, who will be left to deal with all of this? County commissioners will become the responsible party for this facility and all of its issues, unless they refuse to accept responsibility for it. That means that we'll have five politicians here with zero wastewater facility management experience that would be pre replenishing chemicals, monitoring meters, doing maintenance on the facility, et cetera. The wastewater from this facility, this is a huge issue, will not enter the San Antonio River as you have outlined in your plans. That is absolutely false because the elevation in that area leading to the river where you have this flow directed is higher than where the flow would be going. Water does not go uphill. 
and I don't know if any of you have ever been to that property to see Mr. Frazier's property. He can speak more to that. So you'll have this nasty wastewater that will be collecting and become standing water on his property because there's nowhere for it to drain and he runs cattle out there and he has agricultural business out there. And then you bring in mosquitoes and insects that cause disease to not only humans but animals because of that collection of water because it has nowhere to go. The pushing of additional traffic cutting through Shannon Ridge. If you've ever been out to Shannon Ridge for all of us that live out there, our roads are amazing, right? <laughs> Okay, no, they're not. They're deplorable. We all know that. Our commissioners know that. You add an additional, if every one of those homes has a, a one, one car, which we know they probably have two, that's another 1,000 vehicles passing through that road. That's unacceptable. It's, we cannot accommodate that. Our roads will collapse. And as a former board member of the Floresville ISD, I don't know if you've had these conversations with them, I know that our district is at capacity. And actually our Floresville South Elementary is over capacity. So we cannot accommodate that kind of, that, that, no, that many numbers, or that many additional students on our district. We're already looking at a potential bond down the road. If they're not already discussing it, I'm no longer on the board, but that may be something that's already talked about. And that's another bill that the taxpayers are gonna have to foot. Our electric water, road infrastructure, none of this can support what you all are proposing. And I wanna say shame on you, Brady, and your associates for failing to respond to our numerous messages to meet and answer our questions about this pro project since last year. Shame on you for lying about the details of this project just to get the yes votes, and shame on you for attempting to push this trash into our community, even after admitting you would not even want this in your own backyard. We will not give up, we will not go away quietly. This wastewater facility does not belong in our backyard, as you don't want it in yours. And all of our elected officials, we're demanding that they do what do right by us as the taxpayers and property owners in our community. Let's keep our, our president to three minutes, please. Okay. Uh, we'll let him go first and then just... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I got a few questions. Um, what's the cost of the homes going to be? At this time, we don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. So you got, you got this whole plat and you don't know the cost of the homes yet. Okay, and you, sorry? Oh, sorry, uh, I'm John Petri, I'm a Shannon Ridge resident. I live off of Cary Lane, the thoroughfare that you wanna put through the subdivision. Um, will these homes be government subsidized? No. Okay. And just to answer your first question, we are not putting our thoroughfare through Cary Lane. Well, that's kind of the way you portrayed it the first, when you spoke just a few minutes ago. Sorry, just to clarify, the main thoroughfare in the neighborhood is going to tie to Highway 181. Okay, the main thoroughfare. That's what are correct. you doing with Cary Lane? Yeah. Cary Lane is a second point of access for emergency access, and well, okay, a subdivision so. this size needs a secondary point of access. Okay, when are you breaking ground? At this time, we don't know. We're, again, very early in the process. You gonna have a fence or anything besides, I understand a 60 foot green belt between Shannon Ridge and the development? That's correct, approximately. No fence. The, the properties, the homes will have fences on the back of the lots. There's a wire fence right now at the southern end of the property. No, I know, I live there, that, that wire fence. I'm, I'm asking, are you guys doing any fence on your, so if there's a 60 foot green belt, are you guys gonna put a fence on your side of that green belt to separate the, the properties from Shannon Ridge? I think the lots back up to that green belt, they'll have fences. Okay. But again. All right, so. 900 low-income minimum wage families are gonna move into Floresville. Floresville has a population of 7,800 people. So you're gonna increase Floresville's population by almost 25% with low-income minimum wage families. Have you guys thought about where the jobs are gonna come from? Because if they're minimum wage families, they're not gonna have the gas money after paying utilities to Phelps and to Oak Hills Water with, with that kind of an income to drive to San Antonio. Where are we gonna find those kind of jobs in Floresville? Attainable housing does not mean that they're minimum wage workers. What kind of people do you think are gonna buy a thousand square foot home on a, what was the lot size? Do you, do, you, do you actually think anything other than that is gonna purchase those lots? Yeah, I, I'm sure of it. There'll be coaches, school teachers, people that work at the hospital. 
I, I'm equally I, I'm equally sure that you're not speaking the truth right now. Um, so uh, so here's my problem. These minimum minimum wage workers they're not going to find jobs in Floresville, and after paying the exorbitant electric and water fees in Wilson County plus their mortgage, they're not going to be able to commute to San Antonio and still feed their families where they're likely minimum or slightly above minimum wage jobs are. I know you don't care. I see it in your face. Um, the results are going to be foreclosures, which are going to go on the back of the county. Mm -hmm. So that's something you want to consider because these, these people are not going to find jobs in this area, not for the kind of income that are going to be buying those homes. And you're increasing Floresville's population by 25% with minimum wage, low income families. Really? Is that what you want? Thank you. I will. <clears throat> My name is Debbie Segovia. I'm also a property owner in Shannon Ridge. Um, I'm also a retiree from San Antonio Water System, uh, a, a professional position. Um, I know all about water treatment plants. And my question for you is, how are you all going to finance or how are you going to have the property owners finance the ongoing operation and maintenance of this water treatment plant? Because as John mentioned, the utility cost for a subdivision like this for low-income families, uh, I would imagine you're looking at a MUD or having Sarah create a MUD or, or I know the county has no interest in taking over this and they have no interest in taking over the roads. So how are you gonna have these low-income families pay for the ongoing maintenance of this water treatment plant? And I've done the research on a small water treatment plant and what it costs per year. So <clears throat> basically, you're going to require these people to pay an assessment fee every year, probably about $996 a year to cover the ongoing maintenance of the water treatment plant. So I would like to hear your thoughts on how you're going to handle that. And are you going to let the people know, the people that buy these homes, are you going to let them know that, hey, at the end of every year, there's going to be an assessment. You're going to have to pay for the ongoing maintenance of the water treatment plant. Because I can guarantee you this plant is not going to be absorbed by Wilson County and the other residents of Wilson County are not going to pay for it. Um, so a couple of things about the wastewater plant and wastewater treatment plant waters being supplied by Oak Hills. Um, the wastewater plant will have an operator, licensed operator by the state of Texas, who will be hired by the utility district. The intent right now is to have a municipal utility district which will cover the boundary of the property. It'll collect ad valorem taxes, but it'll also assess a monthly rate for wastewater. That monthly rate is gonna capture the operational costs and sinking fund costs to fix equipment over time. So, so wait, but no, so sir, no, sir, just within the boundaries of the district and just the it, users within the district. Yeah, just within the district. That's correct. So have you calculated what that cost is going to be? Yeah, there's um, a basic feasibility calculation that's done as part of the creation report that we've gone through. But really, the costs will come in as we start operating the plant. So it depends on the plant process, on the type of plant we use. We're planning an extended aeration plant right now. It depends on chemical costs, depends on how much mm -hmm. we're paying the operator. All those things go into the rate. And essentially, the rate has to be even for the district. The district can't operate at a loss because exactly. it doesn't have another source of revenue. And so that rate will wind up being... The number you quoted of thousand dollars a year is not too far off. Probably, mm -hmm. you know, between eighty and a hundred dollars a month. But that's above and beyond the cost of water and the cost of sewer. No, that's services. that's the cost of sewer. Okay. Alone, yes. So, are you going to notify your buyers that they're going to be paying almost a hundred dollars a month in addition to their water costs? Their utility disclosure. They'll get a disclosure that they're in a district when they purchase the land and their utility rates will be published the district I understand that and and yes people should read their documents but you know that they don't so i'm asking you are y'all going to make a point of letting people know that are interested in buying these little tiny dippy lots that with this little tiny piece of land they're going to be paying twice what people in san antonio pay for sewer okay sewer and water sewer and water in san antonio is not even a hundred dollars a month 
so you're talking about it's about a thousand dollars a year so a little less than a hundred dollars a month plus the cost of water from oak hills right plus the other taxes so really and truly we would really like for y'all just to go away we don't want this in our area we do not want it the people on county road 320 do not want it do you care no no, no. what is this district who, who is that it's a utility Are district you talking about Oak Hills is going to be a district? No, no sir. No, that sewer part would this, be a This will be created on this land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another yes, sir. taxing district for just that, that subdivision. Just that yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's called a MUD, Municipal it's Utility. It's really hard to have a couple people talking when we're trying to record. Um, Mr. Rack, did you have any answers, or did you just reserve anything? I yeah. think we addressed MUD on that. My name's uh, Michelle Papp. I also live in Shannon Ridge. You know, you're talking about all these expenses for this water treatment plant and stuff. Have you thought about if you just increase the lot size and you put like a septic in, their $100 a month that they would have to pay for sewer is essentially what you pay, even actually less than that, to pump a septic. So is it the initial cost of having to put in the septics and the value that you want to, you know, crank out these Lego houses to kind of get the profit, or is it more about quality of life? No, it's profit. profit. It's profit. 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 I mean, we all know it's profit, it's but what I'm asking, obviously you're not gonna go away. That's not an option, and I know we're growing, but the balance and the middle ground seems to be bigger lots and a septic. Yeah. Easy. You can keep the houses this big. You just increase the lot size a little bit, add a little bit on the end, for the houses, and then there's a balance, you know. But that was, that was it. It is happening, or you can have septic. It's happening. If it's an aerobics, it doesn't matter. Wilson County, it's happening. But you cut the profit in half, building half the homes. My name's Roy Baring. My family owns a ranch on two sides of this proposed uh, project. You say the lots are gonna be 40 foot wide? That's how wide this room is. That's 40 foot. Yep. How big is the house going to be? How many square foot? Don't tell me you don't know. I've been in construction for 50 know, years. Assuming probably somewhere between 12 and 2,400 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> now, the last time they had a meeting, it was going to be 1,000 foot. Uh, I've never said that. Well, I know you weren't there because no one was there because no one just show up and face everybody. Now, you're probably looking at a house of 1,000 square foot. I never said that. Well, I want to see a 24 square, a 2400 square foot house on that. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, 40 by it has to be a, a trailer house, a 16 by 65 trailer house is 1,040 feet. Are well, these houses going to be sold or rented? All we do is develop the land. We're not home builders. Um, it's open so for sale. Just throw it up there and let yeah. So it's open to whoever. It's open to whoever. If, if we want to take a poll and pitch in and buy it, make it a nature preserve, fine with me. We All we do is buy and sell land. I've offered to buy the back end of this place from you, and I couldn't even get a word out of you about that. Now, if you want to make that offer again, you and I can we talk. Can, we, we can talk after this, but we're selling it. No, I'm serious. You've got a whole room of people here telling me you're gonna, you want to negotiate on that back 255 end. 255 acres is for sale. All right, you're talking about the second entry. Yes, sir. It's the security entry. Is that going to be locked up? So... Right now, I believe that's a county road, and so that would have to be something. Oh no, your gate where you come up to that fence—that's your property. Then when you go, when you when it goes through, yeah, in the Shannon Ridge, that's a county road. At that gate where you say there's going to be a secondary entrance sure. for fire, EMS, and police. I was a San Antonio fireman for 25 years. We had lock boxes all over San Antonio. If we had to go in someplace, we unlocked the gate and went in. You can't leave it open. You can't tell me a thousand residents. We're going to go out that main road. It doesn't take a smart person to figure out, you know what, I can shoot across here and miss all this traffic. When everybody's going at 8 o'clock in the morning to go to work or come home at 5 o'clock. I'm telling you, that's not going to happen. We're not going to allow that. Have y'all run a, done an a environmental study on this? Wildlife? You have? Where's it at? Where's it at? Uh, phase 1 ESA? No, no, no. I don't know what that means. An environmental study or what that's going to do to the wildlife and anything else that might be there. I don't know of an environmental impact study. 
No. So you're ready to go ahead with all this and just it'll catch up with us later on on that. Well, there's been some, so there was water quality modeling done with the wastewater permit to assess the impacts to the receiving stream. But so that's it's easier to ask requirement. forgiveness and ask for permission is what you're saying. No, Never that's not you, what I'm saying. You know, I'm saying there's no requirement for Millions of dollars, assessment. you can't answer anything. We don't know yet. I was, I was in business, multiple businesses for over 50 years. I could tell you what I was gonna make or not make and what I was gonna do before I ever got into it. So you can't sit there and tell me you don't have more information, the size of houses, the cost of them, and everything else. And now all of a sudden, you're in the middle of this thing and you wanna you want get with it. Now you wanna come up and put another road in. Oh man, I wasn't finished. Hey, I'll give you another three minutes, Roy. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Yes, my name is John McClung. Um, it's Mr. Majors? No, my what, name what? is Dan Ryan. Dan, okay, I'm with, with LJA. Dan Engineering. Ryan. Yes. And, oh, what do you do? I'm are a civil you, engineer. Are you uh, employed by HK? No, we're, we have a consulting contract with HK. Okay, but you're, you're working agreement. for HK through yes, a consulting contract. Yes, sir. Were you involved in the... Um, evaluation and design of the wastewater? Yes, sir, that was me. That was you? Okay, great. And as part of your work, did you do any uh, surveying and topographical analysis of the discharge route between the exit point from the wastewater treatment plant and the San Antonio River? Yes, sir. You did? Not survey work, but we looked at the topography, yes. Okay, did you go on the site and do any actual topo measurements? No, sir. You did not. Do you consider that something that uh, you should have done? No. And why not? Because Sandpit Creek is a water adjacent to the state where we discharge to it. I know that's your contention, but uh, if I were to tell you that uh, it's estimated by my client who has done uh, detailed topographical analysis that approximately 60 to 80 acres will be regularly inundated by the effluent discharge, would that surprise you? I'm not sure I can give an opinion without looking at it. Okay, and you can't give an opinion because you haven't looked at it. Is that correct, sir? I've evaluated it during the course of the litigation at TCEQ. I had to look at it, but I'm not revisiting that testimony right now. Right, well, uh, I believe that the uh, sworn answers in that proceeding were that uh, HK has not done any um, topographical analysis of the discharge route, but uh, we'll let the record speak for itself. Now, Mr. Baggs, I just have a couple of questions and I'll be done. Uh, you're a paid spokesperson for HK, are you not? Uh, I'm an employee and partner from HK. Oh, okay, so you also have an ownership interest in HK as well? Yes. Very good. Um, were you involved in any way in the uh, planning of the subdivision? Yes. Okay, were you involved in the planning of the um, wastewater treatment facility and its discharge route? Uh, not the engineering of it, but I do know that we needed it and it was going into Sandpit Creek. Okay, right, right. But I'm talking about what happens to it after it's in Sandpit Creek. Where does it go after that? Uh, towards the San Antonio River. Towards the San Antonio River. In How does Sandpit it get Creek. to the San Antonio River? How does it get there? Through Sandpit Creek. Once it leaves Sandpit Creek, it goes directly into the San Antonio River. Is that what you're selling? Eventually, you yes. Eventually. Eventually. What do you mean by eventually? And eventually, the Sandpit Creek is a tributary of the San Antonio River. But where does Sandpit Creek, Sandpit Creek terminate, do you know? Eventually into the San Antonio River. So you really don't know what you're talking about, do you? It's a tributary of the San, San Antonio River. Um, in our proceedings, a map was presented that was prepared by uh, HK, and there was a, a, a blue line identified that was a straight line from the discharge point of Sandpit Creek directly to the San Antonio River. Uh, that line was not on the USGS map. Do you know who put that line there as part of your submission? I don't know. Dan? Yeah, Do you L know who put LJ that line there? Did. Yeah. Who did? My staff did. Your staff did? Yes, as a depiction and what of does the that discharge line route. signify? It signifies where we anticipate the discharge to flow. Were you expected to flow? Yes. Were you aware that there was a long existing railroad easement there and approximately an eight foot rise from the discharge point of Sandpit Creek before you get to the San Antonio River? No. You weren't? Not because originally. you didn't care to check, did you? 
you didn't check. The nature of the stream is an intermittent stream. An intermittent stream does not require you to go downstream and assess the receiving water a mile downstream like it does with perennial streams. Are you familiar with the, f do you know that uh, the Frasers have made numerous attempts through their uh, council, not me, but through the council in the case, to engage HK in discussions about some feasible resolution of this matter? Okay. Does anybody want to yield their well, I'll give him five, six minutes. Everybody give him three minutes. Let him go. I have one more question. Yeah. Yeah, the, the question is, or the comment I'm going to make, and you tell me if it's right or wrong, is that HK made no intentional effort to evaluate the topography between the discharge point of Sand, Kit, Sand Pit Creek and the body of water known as the San Antonio River before filing its application for the permit and before filing for a plat in this county. Is that correct? Yes to the first question, which was prior to filing the application for the wastewater permit, we did not look at the downstream topography beyond um, the confluence or the intersection of Highway 181 in the creek. That's what we looked at. All right, very good. Thank you. And thank you, gentlemen. I, you told me everything I needed to know. And it's going to take me very long. If you, you, no, you're taking up my time. I'm Doug Menchel. Now, I don't think anyone in here, and I didn't realize it until just now when, when he was speaking, you're not just affecting Mr. Frazier's property or Mr. Walls's property. You're affecting the Union Pacific property. And I'll guarantee you one thing, Union Pacific has got bigger pockets than either one of you. And I will call them because I have uh, Hill, Jim Hill's number in my phone because I tried to buy that part of the easement that goes through my property, which is two properties over from Mr. Frazier's. So I will be calling him this afternoon when I leave here, and I'll be informing him, and I'm pretty sure that we'll get them on our side. So y'all may not be in high cotton. Sure, yeah, after the meeting, you can come up and look at them. Hi, my name is Colleen Gamble, and I live in Shannon Ridge. I'm not going to beat a dead horse on all the other issues that have been raised, and they've been many. Um, what I will say is I have serious concerns for the school buses, the school district, the fire department, police, EMS. Um, your subdivision that you're talking about, your roads are going to be mighty narrow. Your houses are going to be packed in very close together. You're going to have a lot of vehicles parked on the road, parked on the street. How are those school buses going to turn around? How are they going to get those kids safely to and from? How is the fire department going to get there? How are they going to bring those water trucks in and out of there safely? Do you want that on yourself? Do you want that on you if somebody gets hurt? If somebody's child gets hurt? If these people are rushing to and from and they can't see and somebody's child is injured, do you want that on you? If somebody's home burns down and somebody's injured, would you like that on yourself? And when you developed your own neighborhood, you, Mr. Baggs, developed your own neighborhood out on 405, did you build it like this? No. No, did not. You did not. When you developed your own neighborhood that you lived in, those houses had bigger lot sizes, didn't they? And they're also not selling really fast. So what is your motivation, Mr. Baggs? So when you, when you wanted to live there, you weren't concerned with how quickly they sold. <laughs> but as long as you don't have to live there, the motivation not, could be. I do not live in that subdivision. Well, I know for a fact that you had a hand in developing it. That's public record. I did. Yeah, we all can see that. I did. Yeah. But luckily, when that subdivision was developed, the person who sold it to you made sure that there were restrictions that didn't allow you to build these tiny lots the size of this room. There was no restriction. Oh, so you elected to do the right thing the right thing? Yes. So you could do that here too? Yes. yes. Thank you. And just to let you know guys, all this is input. They are taking this information because they're trying to come to a compromise here. So it's not so much as this is set in stone, this is the way it's going to be carried. This is them coming to the table and listening to what are the concerns. 
How can we help? What can we do? Increase this market, bigger lots of acceptance. And if it's not this company, there will be another company. You know, it's, it's the fact of the matter. But at this point, Mr. Badger is here to listen to the concerns and see what adjustments we can make for this project for him. It's not that it's developing, it's what they're doing exactly. with it. That's, that's the problem. We know development's coming, and we, and we would welcome it if they do it properly. Nobody wants 900 and something homes on 250 acres. We're just not interested. It's ridiculous. Mr. Fraser, Mr. Fraser, go ahead. Yes, I, I have a direct question for, for you too. You've said you did not do any kind of survey on my property. Is that your contention at this point? No, I said, I'm wait, you yes, better tell the truth. <laughs> I, I will never lie. Um, I can guarantee that. Um, we didn't do any surveying until after you contacted us. And oh, then so we you went did do site. survey on we my property. The gentleman before and asked. And did we not ask you for can I finish, of please? That, that information? The gentleman before asked me if we surveyed before submitting the permit. The answer was no, we didn't. After you contacted us and after you filed contested case hearing with TCQ, we did go out there and take a look. I, I know, because I let your, let your survey team me in to do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Why wouldn't you share that information back to us? That's not my decision to make. That, that, that information doesn't belong to us. It's our clients. Mr. Bax, how come you wouldn't share that information? The recommendation we got was just to sit tight and let TCEQ go through the hearing. Okay. Okay, so now, does, does the information that you gave Mr. Bax's company match up with that blue line that you, that you drew on the, the documents that you sent to TECQ? The blue line is a depiction of a route. There and is will, a topo Will the rise water there. flow through that blue line to the San Antonio River? It will spread out and go around the old railroad yes, right away. It'll, to it'll get go in there. to my property and flood a big portion of our hayfield. Then it'll go to Mr. Wall's property. We've got two other landowners next to us that are going to be, that water will back up all the way back to. Uh, you want to show that FEMA map? Sure. We do have that. I, there's no doubt about it. You're going to be di dumping over 600 million gallons of water a year onto into Sandpit Creek. This is a, a map showing the floodplain in the area, pardon me. Um, and this is the Bella's Ranch property right here. Sure. Highway 181 comes across right in here. And this is the floodplain for the San Antonio River, which extends on up through here. So all that property is in the floodplain currently. And flood depicts, this depicts Sandpit Creek, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, depicts Sandpit Creek coming through here and tying into the San Antonio River as well. It, do, it, do, it does not. It does not show it going, going to Sand, Sandpit it's, Creek it's on, on that USGA map. It does not. It shows it ending in the middle of our property. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. You've answered my questions. Uh, name's Emmanuel Ayala. I live uh, just downstream of Sorry. where you're going to be, uh, the Bella Ranch or whatever. Uh, before the water gets into M Mr. Fraser's house, it'll first be, uh, it'll, it'll inundate my four little acres that I got right there. Can uh, you tell me that uh, the discharge water is not going to negatively affect or destroy the usage of that land? My Land. Yes, so I, I'm familiar with your property and you're immediately upstream of the tech stop box culverts on 181, right? Right. The, the box culverts are gonna pass that water through. There's not gonna be inundation on your property. It's right there, the stream runs. We did walk that stream along 181 to check how it ran, ran through. And in terms of negatively affecting your property, that's one of those uh, tasks the state is tasked with when issuing a permit is they verify there is no adverse impact to receiving waters. In this case, you've got a intermittent stream, which means it only runs when it rains. So you'll have base flow potentially running through there, 
through your property. And so there will be flow, but it's going to be highly treated and it's not going to flood your property. It's a very small amount. If you look at, if you look at a small channel, it's probably about four inches deep, six feet wide is how much water you're looking at when the plant is fully developed running through there. Yeah, that's only if the topography ma uh, maps that you were using are correct. And uh, we've already figured out that some of that stuff doesn't match up. Uh, you know, my land, there's large portions of at least two, three acres of the little four acre plot that I have uh, ends up uh, being a little shallower than even the covert uh, going across. Uh, and I know that has to do with erosion with other things with maybe the, some floods that happened 20, 30 years ago. Uh, that's the kind of stuff. I've been at that property for seven years, eight years. And uh, I've never seen flow uh, down that way, uh, even in the even during the heaviest rain. So, uh, I, 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 you know, this is this is it is going to affect my land. I know that it will. It will make it uh, uh, make it so that I won't be able to walk through it. My kids won't be able to play in it. And uh, and you know, y'all are going to be dumping land, uh, water over there, destroying properties downstream. And there's nothing uh, that. Uh, I mean, at that point, do I have to, you know, I don't want to have to do anything uh, on the, uh, you know, on the opposite side of this, you know, it's a, uh, as far as I know, it's illegal to destroy someone else's property. Uh, so I, I, that's all I got to say. You won't be alone. There'll be a class action. Yep. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Glass and I live on Shannon Ridge. And it seems to me that with all the money you gentlemen are spending in legal fees and stuff, that what we are asking is very reasonable. Bigger lots with septic tanks. And we would go away, at least I think we would. So consider that, because you know, we would be happy and you would get not all the money that you might in smaller lots, but at least you would have support from us. So compromise. Thank you. Like sleep better. My name is Faye Taylor. I live in the city of Floresville. Been in Floresville all my entire life. I don't really have a pony in this show because I don't live in Shannon Ridge. But this is our town and our county. The thing is, I, want, I have one question. Why do you only have one ingress, egress? The main reason is the narrowness of the property up at the front. So the, fr the front of the property is very narrow compared to the depth. So for 250 acres, I think that frontage is, you know, 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet, something like that. 1,500 feet is plenty of room for two ingresses and egresses. And the second thing I was going to mention is the amount of trips that are being generated. We're building a wider entrance on 181, and we've got to work with TxDOT on the number of driveways that we put on that highway as well. There's been a traffic impact assessment done to make sure that we're making the necessary improvements to keep things safe and same level of service on that highway. So did TxDOT decline to ingresses and egresses? I, I can't speak to that. I don't know because typically they run 450 feet apart on a highway with those speed limits. I don't And if know. you're 1,700 feet wide, you should have the ability to put in two ingresses and egresses unless you're having other issues or you're not wanting to put in enough streets to accommodate that. I'm I was gonna, sorry, I was just looking at the map. And um, the, the one other reason is Sandpit Creek because we've got a fairly large crossing of it where we're out of the floodplain and the rest of Sandpit Creek downstream, um, there is a floodplain that encroaches on the property. In, in fact, the first 20, 25 acres of the property, there's a large creek crossing. And so that's a big part of why we can't cross it multiple times there without causing impacts downstream. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Jackson. I live in Shannon Ridge. I'm also commissioner with ESD5, which is fire service here. As a retired fireman, a couple of my questions are, how wide are your streets going to be? I think curb I, to curb. I think right now they're 30 feet, I think, curb to curb, or that may be 30 feet pavement. I'm not sure. Okay. 
My question is, because I had heard 25, we already have issue with one of the other subdivisions where we've run an eight and a half foot engine down the street with dualies parked on each side. I think we got to stop to make turns. The current it's master plan that we have, I believe it's it's 30 foot pavement. 30 foot pavement. 30 foot pavement? Yes. And lip, how far apart are you? Lip to lip. Lip yeah. to lip? Okay. Yeah. So and how far apart are your hydrants going to be? Uh, 500 feet. Yeah. Off of a six or eight inch main? Maybe a 12. On, on the the main, only on the sixes main. we'll have will be on the dead ends. Like a cul-de-sac would have a six. The other ones would all be eights. And the main line in is a 12. Okay. You're going to be getting with ESD with the chief. I would take it to when you go to the hydrants, make sure we end up with the right sizes. And, and, and forgive me, I'm, I'm not exactly sure which um, I ESD 4 and 5. Which one is EMS and which one's fire? 4 is EMS, 5 is fire. Okay. Yes, we will. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Mr. Jackson, is that wide enough? Yes, ma'am. Eight and a half foot engine, eight foot vehicle. Does that mean? Thank you, sir. You put the tower up, then you got to put your landing legs between the cars. Thank you. My name is Gene Walls. I live right past Mr. Frazier, where your water will be dumping on my property. Uh, is it okay for cattle to drink that water? Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. How about other livestock? No, no adverse effects ever. You're guaranteeing me that. Well, <laughs> I'm, well, why not? I can't guarantee you said it's anything. Good. Can well, we drink it? Can you drink it? No, sir. That'd be very. Why, why wouldn't it be good for an animal then? Uh, why is it good for an animal? Because the state of Texas has determined oh, the state that. State of Texas says it. Well, and the treatment levels that are used. What, the chemical you put in it is good for cows. That's what you're telling me. The, the only chemical that so will that's be That's going to run directly through my tank, my stock tank. So I'm going to have to pin my cattle off so I don't give them this nasty, excuse my French, shit water. It's going to stink like hell. Y'all know it is. Y'all are just sitting there, oh. Can, can, I, care. can I respond about the F1? Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. The, the treatment process. <clears throat> results in effluent that you have to disinfect. So the chemical that's added that's discharged is chlorine. That chlorine disappears very quickly because so chlorine's chlorine, good. Chlorine's good chlorine because it kills off the bacteria and viruses that are left in the wastewater when you're So how is the smell it. coming off this plant? The odor from the plant is going to be mitigated by a bunch of factors. So the first is there's a buffer required again by the state. Cologne, you know, stuff like that that's going to make it smell good. No, sir. All your no, sir. potpourri? Is that? Okay. That's there's, the word, potpourri. There's buffering that we do, distance buffering. Mm -hmm. There's the plant siting, which is that we've aligned it with the um, winds so that during the winter, Wind. your prevailing winds are blowing directions that affect, affect the least people. I feel then, sorry for a couple of them right next to they're gonna tip's gonna be running right next to their house. They can't even go outside anymore. <laughs> it's amazing. Y'all need Treated to put this in your backyard. Has almost no odor other than Y'all need to put this in smell. your backyard. There's no answer to anybody else. Hi, my name's Elise Arnett. I live actually uh, in Shady uh, Oaks, and we just moved here. I'm new. I moved here from North San Antonio to get away from all this stuff, so I'm probably the newest resident here of about seven months. We live out 320. They're building what is just tearing up our roads. I've had some great conversations with Mr. King, and I think that just for the record, um, you stated it yourself, you're just the developer. I hope that you listen to the people and kind of modify your plan because it looks like what I just came from in Washington State. There are people that like these homes, my daughter being one of them. Um, they are pretty well to do and they've chosen one of these tracked homes that's probably 15, oh, I'll say 3,000 square feet up and down with hardly any front lawn or side lawn. People do like that and they're not all low income. So I will put my, uh, put my two cents in there. However, this is now my community, and I moved out here to get away from that because of the traffic and the crime and everything else. I think the bigger issue is not to hope that you'll listen to this community and make some changes 
that uh, are, are a win-win for everybody involved, not just concerning your money, but the people that have the livestock and all the other stuff you heard. I think it is, sits with our county and our commissioners and the people that also have some pull as to how this is going to go that affects the future, the cost, the taxes, the roads. Thank you for working on our road on 320 today. I appreciate that um, because it's just getting worse. So uh, I stand with my close neighbors and I'm here to support you guys because it's going to affect the whole town. And I hope you guys listen and just don't go away and build those teeny tiny lots. Hopefully you got a playground in there for the kids. Hopefully something to benefit the entire community, the education system and EMS, fire, all that. Thank you. Ma'am, respectfully, point of contention, these are not going to be anywhere near 3,000 square foot homes. Well, I'm just saying, if they're up and down, they could hit close to that. Believe me, I just they came for one. Not, no. They're not, they're not yeah, nice, they're not, not something that. I want to live in. But. Right. 2,400 square feet. I don't think they're going to get that Maybe. either. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Andy Kelly here. Mr. Beggs, I was at that February 15th meeting with the Permits and Development Department, and at that meeting you stated you were going to do reclaimed water to help supply a soccer field. Um, it's my understanding that if you use a treatment plant with reclaimed water, that requires a different permit. I, I can speak to that. It's, it's actually just an additional authorization from the state. So the state wants to encourage beneficial reuse of effluent because a lot of times it's just discharged to a creek. And so beneficial reuse is authorized, but it's a special authorization. Basically, the engineer submits a report to the state they determine whether it's suitable for human contact or not. Those are the two levels. Ours is going to be suitable for human contact as discharge, so it would already qualify. And then they issue an authorization for use of that. It doesn't change any of the permit requirements. It doesn't change the authorization to discharge, but it allows that, whether it's the utility district or the homeowner's association by contract with the district to take that and substitute it for irrigation and other uses. So there is potential for beneficial reuse out of it. Okay, because it was my understanding with the meeting with um, SAWS people that it's, it's a 210 permit. It's actually an authorization. It's not a permit on its own. And, and it's a letter that we submit to the state and they send us back an authorization to discharge. And the reason it's called 210 is that it's Title 30 of the Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 210, talks about beneficial reuse. How would y'all separate out non-toilet water to be able to use that gray water? It, it's not gray water. It comes from the exact same reservoir of water. So instead of being discharged to the stream, we would have a storage tank on site, and it would be diverted into that tank. And then from that tank, it would be pumped out through what's called purple pipe. It can be pipe wrapped in purple tape. But that system is a marked system with non-potable water. It's got to have signs showing that it's non-potable and it goes out to irrigation and other uses. And there's a list of uses that are acceptable for it, again, depending on the quality of the effluent. But. And I did look that up. Um, TCEQ is very specific. Um, TCEQ is very specific on separating the use, because in other words, dishwater, laundry water can all be used for like a soccer field, but they were very specific about separating toilet water. That's that's not correct. You're mixing gray water with 210 reuse. 210 reuse is treated effluent. It has to have gone through a wastewater plant. It can't just be water from a home that's gone into a separate system. That's gray water system. We're not doing anything like that here. Here we're taking everything from every single house, collecting it into a collective sewer, taking it to the treatment plant, treating it. At that point, if it's needed for beneficial reuse, it'll get sent there. If not, it'll get discharged to the creek. So if it's going to be treated for beneficial reuse, it goes through a, an additional treatment process? No, ma'am. In this case, it would not go through an additional treatment process because our effluent quality already exceeds the level that's required by TCQ for beneficial reuse. Is it possible for us to get a copy of, you said that your, your uh, requirements, you've 
you've boosted your requirements for the effluent. Can we get copies of that? Yes, ma'am. We're currently awaiting a copy of the final permit. We have a draft permit, and there were no changes made to the draft permit, so we can share that draft permit. That's It's published by the state, and it's on the website. But, yeah, we can get a copy of it, and I can send it okay, to someone that would here be great. Wilson County. Thank you. Sure. Sorry. So like I was saying, I was at the town hall meeting and someone stood up and said, in this day and age, bad on the county for not having this online or a public forum or somewhere where it can be reached. So we came back right away, started a Facebook page, which uh, we should be streaming right now. We're taking questions from Facebook as well. It's also on our website. We have revamped our website. We are posting agendas for review committee. We're posting agendas for commissioner's court. And uh, we're trying really hard to get a dashboard going on our page so you can see what potential subdivisions are coming into the Wilson County. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? We don't post minutes, but you are more than welcome to them if you shoot us an email. Uh, because it ha it's open records request. So if you send me an email asking for a certain record, I have to have proof that I gave out this information. So whatever we take in, once it's accepted, it is public information. And uh, yes, it's on the Wilson County Permit and Development. And it will also be on our website. We try to keep them both going at the same time. Sometimes our website doesn't work, but you know, it has its days. Yes, ma'am. What gives the, a developer the right to create this wastewater facility and force the water from that source of water to go to other properties? What, what allows that? How do, how do they do that? TCQ. TCQ only approves the water. The treatment so, of the water, yes. Well, uh huh. That's correct. So what gives them the right to do this to make sure that they're safe and that it's not causing pollution or push it out into the community? And again, this is why we're here. We're trying to listen. We're trying to see. Like I said, he was very generous of, uh, it was very generous of him to take us up on the offer. Uh, it's not easy, guys. It's not easy. But, you know, whatever he can take from here, whatever they can take from here, and maybe tweak a couple things, you know, we appreciate that. But what gives them the right to do that? Because it's just sewage. It's just that treated water, whatever you want to call it, the sewage, onto other private property. Is that with your property that you want that? No. Yeah, you guys never no. Yes, understood. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. If you guys and the commission's court are responsible for either approving or denying this plan mm -hmm. and moving forward with it, that is correct. You guys are responsible for this, right? The subcommittee that you the yes, the Wilson uh, County Development Review Committee. And it goes through Yes, it goes through ours first before it goes to commission commissioner's court. If you're responsible for approving that and the commissioners are responsible for approving that and they have to make an educated informed decision mm -hmm. on Yes. It's their obligation to spend all the tax dollars to investigate whether what Mr. Fraser and his attorneys are contending is true or not. That's they right. Be based on their That's right. And that being said, 
their plat was just now submitted. There's a process when developments or subdivisions submit their plans. What our process is that we have a contracted engineer, so it hasn't gone to our county contracted engineer. They have not seen it. They have not had a chance to look at it. You know, we're doing this, you know, to see, yes. And this is where we, the committee, and our commissioners have our hands tied. You know, if they're following the regulations, if they're doing everything to the T, we cannot deny it. And that's why we ask for you guys to come here. That's correct. And it has not gone to our engineers yet. They have not taken a look at it. No, no, we have our own. Yes, we have our own. All this will be public information that will be shared. Two questions. Yes, sir. First question is, who are these committee members and who appoints them? Uh, for the review committee? Yes. Well, I am the chairman. Uh, Commissioner King is on the board. Commissioner Perdola. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tekin is here. Mr. Ed Erna and Maureen West. Right. Next question is, so I didn't hear you announce him, and if he's here, I apologize, but I want to know where Gary Martin is. He is on vacation. He's on vacation. <laughs> he knew this meeting was coming up. He did have this planned way before I this, I imagine. A week before the election. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm sure he had the plans no, for I this prior to. Martin's only one missing? Yeah. Well, he will be getting a phone call from today. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I'm glad you guys are here. We do want to hear. It wasn't our decision to make and bring anything to the table unless we heard it from the people that it will be affecting. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that. I don't know that just discharging water is illegal because it's going into a floodplain. Just a question. So if you live in a floodplain and you're under the assumption that there's going to be a river flooding and that you're going to get flooded on your property, that's a whole nother Still put the fences up, you have a septic, you don't have the extra overhead of the water to the plant, nor do you have the ongoing lawsuits that are supposed to cause down the road from dumping your water in on people's property that they pay valuable money for. That's correct. Know? And that's, I, you know, you have, it's, it, it's not fair. And it's not right. And anybody that's on the board and any of the other developers, if they know whether they want to voice or if they can voice or not, I can tell you right now that everybody that's on our review board is very, um, they don't hold back. If there's something that they don't agree with, they, they don't hold back. They'll let them know. And uh, like, again, like I said, this is input this is to see what we can get yeah. from this. Okay, this, this water on Mr. Frazier's property and Mr. Wall's property mm -hmm. will make that wetland. And once it becomes wetland, it's wetland forever. Mm -hmm. right? evaluates that property greatly. So who's going to buy a piece of wetland? I mean, you can't do anything and, and another thing, I want to make a proposal, because we're all here and there's plenty of people here. Mm -hmm. I know you got a review board, but I want you to add five members to that review board. You should have people from the community. Yes, you should have people from the community. At least five people. 
we what have them out of here today? we actually have three members at large where that are from the community and we're probably going to look into uh, uh yeah i just said the names uh i know mr tiki mr Tikin is here he's a uh, from the community one of our members at large but you know we're growing and if that means that we need to cycle in new members you know then that's probably what we're going to have to do Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I agree with you. Whatever is brought to us, we have checklist after checklist. But if they check off every single box that we have for security, then our hands are tied. I'll be like. To investigate uh, which part? The. Uh, well, that's what we're going to have to do. Our county attorney just stepped out. But uh, this is, like I said, just turned in. We have not gotten that far yet. Okay. Let me ask you this. The review board has a meeting, right? Yes, sir. Once a month. Right. We want to be invited to that meeting, and we're going to appoint five or six more people that day. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when is that meeting? We have the right to It meet. is the first Tuesday of the month. Where at? At our building at the Permit and Development Office. Okay. What time? It's behind the DMV. It's a portable building. Okay. And we okay. always host it at 9 o'clock. I plan on uh, everybody be here. Okay. <laughs> And again, like this is not, and we will not be discussing this. No, uh, no, discuss we'll be discussing whatever comes up at the time, whether it's a variance or a pipeline. Yes, ma'am. So one other question. So you said that you look at everything, and basically you have to go through you before they put a shovel in the ground. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. So it goes through me and through the uh, right. engineers, the through the engineers before it goes to the review right. committee. And, and that's why we're here. That's why we don't hold forums for everybody. But if you know that, then it's common sense that you make it say, okay, well, this is something we definitely have to address. And if, it, if the water plant's too far gone in development process that it's not been put back, do you understand what I'm saying? It's, I mean, obviously, you've done a lot of work in every single of the water treatment plant, and I'm sure you're going to have it in every engineering plant. But you need to look at it. But if it's too far gone, Well, that, that is not on, this master plan was turned in, and that is not in the face that we're reviewing at the time. So anytime, anytime that people uh, apply for subdivisions, especially larger subdivisions, it's unit at a time or face at a time. This one has submitted one face, and it's not residential. Right? We don't know, we don't know whether it's going to be residential. But... When we get there, okay. this is why we're doing that. This, we don't do this for any other subdivision that comes up. We approve it, we look at all the logistics, it passes, whatever. This is the first subdivision that we've held a public forum for because we want to know, and there's still ch a chance to make changes. Okay. You know? Sorry, sir, go ahead. Okay, do you want to you want to I don't remember your name. Dan Ryan. Uh, I'm Pat Hutzler. I live in Shannon Ridge. I heard the comment that prior to questions being raised about your surveying that you had not set foot on the property and you had lines drawn on your map whatever you have it took me 15 20 minutes to pull up a official usgs topographic map 
of his ranch. And notice that there's a low spot. I mean, I'm, I'm a retired teacher. I understand topography and what a hasher mark does on a circle. And what I can see in here, it can't go anywhere but this low spot. No, sir. It, once it fills that low spot, it'll go to the river. Well, honor, that's, what I'm, that's my concern, that the due diligence that you as an engineer, and I'm sure this is not your first treatment no, sir. you've worked on, that you wouldn't presume to take the due diligence to contact him ahead of time before he had to contact somebody and force your hand. That's what concerns me about the underlying thinking that's going on with this development that it, to me it just lends a, a sense of you can't be trusted because you didn't do what you could have done and should have done from the very beginning. There are. And so now everything you do now is going to be questioned. You lost your credibility. Yeah. It wasn't, it that, what, what you had, you lost. That's my concern. <laughs> don't lie. Remember, you said you don't lie. No, sir. Um, so first off, Sandpit Creek drains approximately 12 square miles of area. So it's a huge drainage basin that runs a long way up. It's a big, big creek. It's intermittent, which most streams in Texas are. Mm -hmm. Very few perennial streams. That's where we differentiate between one that runs constantly or even most of the winter and one that's dry. And then there's some that have pools. And for intermittent streams, we evaluate the stream immediately after it discharges and then one mile downstream. The one mile downstream is basically where Mr. Fraser's pond is. So that evaluation yielded that there's no change in the discharge path within the one mile downstream no, sorry, period. Uh, one mile downstream. And because of that, when we filed the permit application, we didn't change anything. When we went through TCQ, we didn't change anything on the permit application or the discharge route. The discharge route stayed the same. Ultimately, TCQ's modelers looked at it, came up with the same information we did. Yes, there is a low spot on Mr. Fraser's property. That low spot was created by an impoundment built by one of his neighbors back in the 50s. During the course of this, I went through to try to figure out when that was put in. That impoundment's been there nearly 70 years at this point. I understand that, but did you actually set foot on his property until before he called? I've never set foot on his but, property, period. Wouldn't you think that would be prudent to do? Not necessarily, sir. Okay. You mentioned a couple of times, Dan, the existence of uh, the, I guess it would be the 100-year floodplain. Yes, sir. Uh, adjacent to San Antonio River. Yes, sir. Uh, and, you, and Sand Pit Creek has a 100-year flood Creek, yeah. associated do with Do you believe story. that the presence of the 100-year floodplain uh, gives you or gives your client the right to uh, discharge no. uh, on a regular basis into that same area? I never said that. Oh, I'm just asking you. I, I, I didn't say you did no. say it. I just want to hear... So you're saying that you don't believe the presence of the floodplain changes in any way uh, your client's obligation to not permanently inundate my client's property? The it's right immaterial. to discharge into uh, water adjacent into the state, adjacent to the state, but it, but is it, what we're relying on to discharge where we discharge in Sandpit Creek. Right, and it's going to regularly, permanently, as long as it's flowing, inundate a portion of Mr. Fraser's property before it finally discharges to the San Antonio River. Is that correct? I don't know that. Because you haven't studied that? No, because I, don't, I haven't studied the permeability of the soil. I don't know how much of it will migrate down through okay. the oh, that, great. That's, yes, surface area. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for answering my question. I have a quick question. What, what date, I, I'm very familiar with Santa Creek. What date did you verify the discharge of that creek? Because I've been there 20 years, and I've never seen any water flowing in that creek. No, w yeah. when we inspected it, it was dry. Sorry? When we inspected it, it was dry. It's always been dry when yeah. we've inspected it. Okay. okay. Ms. Serrato, can you talk Thank more you. about, I'm sorry, did I say it correctly? Serrato, can you talk more about phase one? Because I don't think everybody here understands what that means. So I heard you say phase one wasn't even residential. Uh, no, it's 
sewage. It's, uh, it's not the sewage plan either. It's the, the corner lot of the master plan. It's a little tiny. So piece. how many phases are there? Seven? Nine. Nine? Okay. So if you it's were eight. to approve or deny phase one, it's only, eight. So that's all that they're bringing to you now is phase one. Yes, ma'am. They're deliberately chunking this up into little phases so that they can get these approved and then this approved and then this. Mm -hmm. Well, generally, that's how subdivisions work, you know. Um, so what is maybe not one? such a small, a small corner of a phase, but usually developments are built in phases. Yes, but but the first phase would be residential, typically. The first phase would be residential. If you're building a residential community, mm -hmm. the first phase that's brought to you would typically be residential, correct? I'm not sure that they have made that decision yet. So why, is, why was it the tiny little piece submitted? Why, was, why, why is this not for to get, ahead, to get ahead of any changes in regulations that are... I have a question that's coming in from our uh, Facebook Live. Um, where is it? How will, uh, how will this affect the power grid of Phelps, especially with a uh, suboptimal transformer already supplying this area of Floresville? Have we taken that into consideration? Yeah, we're just going to have to plan for it over, I mean, this is going to take many, many years to develop out. So, I mean, 900 homes are not coming on at once. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're well, saying 900 years, homes aren't year. coming on quickly. It's going to take many, many years. <laughs> Lengths of river bend has gone in and done 800 homes in, what, three years? Yeah, lots. 300 lots, lots in three years. So y'all are saying year 900 is not gonna take, it's gonna take many, many years? I wasn't sure the market was eating those lots up that fast, but thank you for the input. I, all I could tell you is it's gonna take several phases of this to be built out. So well, it's, not that, it's not that they're built out. It's that they've been approved, right? They have not been approved. Okay. N none of these phases have been approved. It has. Well, I'm sorry. I meant length of river bend, the 800 homes that, you know, because oh. they've done those in sections. That's the way they do it. But my understanding is that they, that they had 800 lots out there. And whether all of them have been built out or not, I don't know for sure. I just know they've opened the second section of length of river bend. Right. Yeah. So that's something that y'all wouldn't deal with. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact that you're saying mm -hmm. it's going to take many, many years is kind of confusing to me. That well, I mean, once, once a developer puts a set of lots on the ground and he'll randomly pick according to what he feels the demand is, he'll put those lots on the ground, and depending if they sit there for a long time, phase one will, or phase two may be much longer. If those lots get bought very fast, then he's going to push phase two a little bit up. So we, it's hard to tell until you see the demand that the public has given. So what are you proposing for phase one? Well, our phase one is a commercial lot off of Highway 181. So the phase one of this residential subdivision isn't residential? No, that's not what it, it's looking I can't answer that because I don't know. But that's what you're saying. It, yeah, it, it is definitely segregated from the residential lots. The date and everything? By, by a big floodplain. Uh, as of right now, it's just a piece of dirt. Now, we, we have been, uh, we were reached out by the EST to look at potentially purchasing it, but it's been probably 12 months since we last talked to them, maybe longer. What was the purpose of submitting that if you don't know what it's even going to be? Is it to jump ahead of the it's the, regulations that the county It's the only lot that right, that I, right now that I, uh, I can build. We don't, we're not ready to build a sewer treatment plant. We're, we're, we're still planning everything out. I mean, we're still working here. We're still here at this meeting to try to figure out what we're, what we're going to do. My question was, if you submitted this, though, in advance, knowing that today at Commissioner's Court, they were going to adopt changes to the permit regulations, you would have submitted this ahead of time last week to kind of jump in before those regulations were adopted by Commissioner this morning? There's been a lot of proposed changes over probably the last two months. Just so happens to, just so happens that one got approved this morning. So your answer was that I'm trying to submit a subdivision plan. But if it is commercial, let's say it's a business of some type. So now you have even more people coming to and fro and to and fro and to and fro when you stick a residential community this size with this many homes and then also commercial property right there. Now you have even more traffic. Okay. What are you doing for? Is that, is that a question? What you're building now prior to the sewage plant going in. What are you doing for sewage? I'm sorry? The, the section that he's submitted for approval that he says he can build now, mm -hmm. 
How's he building those ahead of the sewage treatment plans? I don't believe there's any plans for building. It's just separating the lot at this time. How big is the lot that's being separated? Do you know, Ambry? Uh, off the top of my head, two acres, about two acres. Hi, my name is Leah Ayala. Bear with me. Um, uh, so I also I'm, I'm married to Emmanuel, who came up here. He's in the white shirt. Uh, we live right next to uh, the development site, and um, I guess my question would be, you know, um, I know that part of the, I guess the phase one you're talking about is right next to the road. Or yeah, it's probably on the opposite side corner of. From what it's you're next to my property, no, right? I don't, I don't no, think so. no, I think it's, it's the, the other direction. End. It's up here. <laughs> it's the only available property outside the floodplain. Oh, okay, okay. So that yeah, that was my that that's my question. So, the the land that's right next to my property, which is in the floodplain, right? Um, I guess, do you have any kind of idea of what y'all are going to do there? I mean, would you put dirt there to put more lots? Like what? No, what kind of is it going to be like a park area? I'm just it's curious about to details. Be a, a large detention pond right now in that area, so to capture stormwater before discharging back to the creek. Okay. And what it what the design of the subdivision when you have these size lots, you put in underground storm sewers and they route the stormwater to that pond. So this is rainwater, and then that pond releases that and we design it so that downstream properties don't see an increase in flow. Is there a way, I mean, you could... It's down yeah. here. Yeah, it's, so the, it's, it's right next to that clunk of Where your property is going trees. to be basically floodplain and green space. There's nothing that we really can do with it. That's right, right next to your property. Yeah, it's not right, so you're going to... Yeah, I just I just want to get more information. So you're, you want to put a, a retention pond. That's what you called it? it? It would be not next to your property. It's just... What direction is just that? Just north and east. Just north and east of that. Yeah. Okay. It'll be dry. It's it's not a normally wet pond, just like Sand Pit Creek isn't normal. Right. Well, everything with a grain of salt, right? I mean, um, I mean, if you really wanted to make sure that the water got to the San Antonio River, why couldn't you, you know, y'all just pipe it there, pipe it, so that it it's not, you know, this whole issue isn't even an issue, right? You just, I mean, yes, there's the piping, right? But uh, then you take care of that. Uh, Flooding, right? Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of taking this. Tell me when my time's up. <laughs> um, well, I do. I, your time's up. <laughs> I do have an online question, and it's probably for Mr. Demmer, who is here. Uh, can Oak Hill supply that much water? And and the second part was uh, how is this going to affect our schools? But I guess the first part of the question would be for you, Mr. Demmer. Yes, okay. The was it was for him. What what was the question? Whether we could pipe to the San Antonio River? The answer is yes, but you'd need to get easements. Right now, we're discharging to a water in the state, which we don't need easements for. But if we ran a pipe, we'd need to get easements all the way to the river. Is that true or not? Because remember, you don't lie. Okay, did he give you the option? I'm sorry, I haven't. Had, I, I've never had a conversation with Mr. Frazier. No, your attorney said. <laughs> you ought to be an attorney. <laughs> so again, we thank you for coming. This was turned in. This is part of the county having full transparency. We didn't want to do this without letting the public know. This was not a closed door meeting that we're trying to have and, and make all these decisions just on our own because it doesn't benefit any of us. You know, we appreciate that you came. We appreciate that you asked questions and that we can take these into consideration. And. Uh, I appreciate your time. I know you must, you know, some of you took days off of work to be here. But, and he was here to listen, you know. 
Where we go from there, I will keep you guys updated. I was going to wrap it up. Yep. <laughs> well, I have one right there. So you want to come up? And uh, about the only question I've got is from Mr. Uh, Brady Bag, is that correct? Yes, sir. I started looking at everything about here and pretty much on the internet. My only big question to me and to anybody, everybody else here should really be concerned is what does H&K developer stand for and where do they come from? Okay. What is your name, sir? What is the question? The question is what is H&K? Your name. Antonio Garanzuay. Uh, the, the original name came from the partnership between uh, Hausman and Co. Not Hong Kong. There is no. There is no. That's, that's just a Facebook lie. Why is the internet full of your development leases? And that guy standing right there with his name associated with Communist China. That's what I found on the internet. You can go look it up yourself. It's my point of contention. And anybody else that wants to look at it, be, feel free. But I don't care for foreign powers coming in here and trying to buy land and force all that stuff on us. He's a United States citizen. Let's hope they don't, okay? Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. We were trying to wrap it up. It seems like the questions are dying down. Uh, is there anybody that has anything important? Will you come up, sir? Poor thing, you know, beat it. Right, hard. Maybe you can put them yeah. down. <laughs> Just a couple of things. One, uh, you know, it's kind of like the the Godfather. It's not personal. This is business, you know. And I understand you guys are in here for business. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lawyer here. For the right. Oh, there you are. I, I went out on the, on the website for TCQ uh, for the. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Tom, yeah, Tom Segura. I live in uh, Shannon Ridge, 104 Emerald Drive. I went out to the TCEQ permit website, and there were some communications back and forth, and one of them was back to you guys from HK Lawyers, uh, where you had petitioned to be an impacted person. And they would not even admit you were impacted, even though this, this, flood, this, this flood of water is going to pass through your property. Let me explain yeah. that I'm the Fraser's Family Council. I'm okay. not the attorney okay. of record in okay. that proceeding. But, but I'm familiar with what yeah, I'm just a lay person reading these documents. That's what, good. And it's like, it kind of gave me an idea that maybe you guys really didn't care about if it flooded or not. And once you get this built, you didn't care. Uh, as a matter of fact, you didn't want to give him even the status of being an impacted person. So I, I was kind of shocked at that. Uh, a couple of just quick, quick things. I know you said, you know, there's been a discussion that we need affordable housing here. Well, there is some affordable housing. Uh, Lodi Grove across from Walmart, affordable housing. I went out to their website last night. Uh, they've sold three homes. There are three ready to move in and one under construction uh, that haven't sold, and they've been actually reduced in price. Mm -hmm. So. It's in Lenore Homes. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, is the demand there? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, certainly not a realtor or, or builder, but to me it would seem like if, if there was a great need for affordable housing, these things would be snapped up. What was the decision to make these? I mean, why, why did y'all go that direction? If you don't mind me, let me step in. It, yeah. And you're exactly right. I mean, we're not saying every house in there is going to be that size. The demand, and whatever it is, is going to drive what we build. So if there's a bunch of people that want to buy 50-footers, 60-footers, 100-footers, want it, Again, the demand is going to drive it. But you're planning it for 40. We're, we're making sure we have the ability to do that size lot. But if you're saying demand drives it, you're going to have to go back to planning and development to change the lot size. If, if over time the demand changes, then you, you may be correct. We may have to. Are y'all going to be the, the, build, the builder? or is No, it, just or, the developer. No, ma'am, we do not build homes. Okay, so you're not really saying demand as far as you go because the builder is going to determine what they do. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and just another quick thing. Somebody asked about the impact on schools. Yes. I'm sorry, not an expert, not even an amateur, but I've done, you know, did a few little research items. Uh, in Texas, the average number of children per family is 1.9, so we're going to say two. 
you're going to have 913 homes, that's 826 children on average. Yeah. You know, some will have more, some will have less. When you bang that up against the Floresville Independent School District numbers, uh, they currently have 4,033 students. You're going to take it up to 5,859, which is a 45% increase in students. It'll take the number of students uh, per teacher. Right now it's 15.63. That'll take it up to 22.7 children per teacher. So. And right now the Floresville ISD School Police Force is understaffed. Thank you. They're not even fully staffed as it stands now. And that came straight from the chief of the Floresville ISD's mouth, that they don't even have full staffing for their police force today, let alone this many more children there. Yeah, and, and the school districts will definitely have to plan for, for this growth. I mean, th there's no doubt. We're not putting every kid that moves into Wilson County in the same exact school system that we have right now. It, all growth is going to have to be planned for, um, and including, including this subdivision. And it's going to take some time for these houses to get put on the ground for people to start moving in i mean it's it's not going to be 900 homes by this time next year it's just not i mean it may be two or three years before we could even get a house on the ground um and as well for the for the school districts and this is just rough estimation um you know each of uh, the full, if full build out once it is built out say it takes 10 or so years 15 years the and this is at what i assume today's prices are uh, annually, the school will be getting about $2.2 million a year from the school district tax, the school tax. Um, not counting, just the county itself um, will get over a million dollars. Hospital gets paid 200 and something thousand a year. ESDs get paid. I mean, it's, these property taxes are, are really meant to pay for some of those, some of those burdens. Did y'all hear us? Yes. Let me give you, the you have people online that are listening and, and commenting, and a lot of them. They can't hear because the mic's not on. My question is did, did, Do you hear us? Are you prepared to respond to our concerns? Yes, I did hear you, and we've been waiting for this meeting before we can sit down with the commissioners and talk. Anybody else? When do you anticipate in speaking with? I'm assuming they're probably going to drive the, the, the date of the meeting, but we've been ready for a while. We've actually, um, and this was per the commissioners, we've been waiting on this meeting before we could talk. Is it going to be before April 2nd? Uh, I don't even know. What, what's, is that a pertinent That's date? when the committee meets, I, right? Yes, we meet okay. on the first Tuesday of the we month. you wait till after that meeting. Yeah, he doesn't have it. Yeah, the agenda I don't has think already we have been anything for that. scheduled yeah. yet. There's nothing uh, for him scheduled for that meeting. Okay. We announced the date and the time for everyone here to review. Yes, the review committee is held at the Permanent Development Office. It is the portable building behind the DMV. We meet every uh, first Tuesday of the month at 9 o'clock. Uh, we do post the agenda both online and our website. So if you see anything on there that interests you or that you have, you know, you'd like to make a comment on, you're more than welcome to attend. It is open to the public. And then they come back to us. Usually they find deficiencies in the plats or defici deficiencies in the drainage studies. And then we communicate that back to the developer. So it's not just like we take it, we take the review committee. It doesn't just fly by us. There's a lot of checks and balances. They come to us and they tell us, well, you're missing this on the plat. You, their drainage study is incorrect. Then we take it back to them and they have to make those adjustments. Thank you. So none of that has been done yet because it is still, it had just hit our desk. So in this period of time, you could send somebody to physically verify on his property. We'll make it a point. We'll send our, our engineer to go look at that. Thank you. All right, guys. <laughs> 
So I think we've exhausted most questions. Who, who's the, who has a question? Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. Keep, we will keep you updated. We have it on our website, on our page, and we have it on our Facebook page. If you have any questions, feel free to give our office a call. We don't mind. We don't mind. You know, we, we tell people the only way, the best way to understand people is when you inform them. You know, we're here to inform people. And so a lot of people don't even know what really is going on. So we don't mind that you call us and get correct information. We encourage that, you know? But uh, I do want to thank Mr. Bags and, uh, oh my God. Damn. <laughs> right, for coming. You know, they sat here, listened, talked, got a little bit attacked, but uh, they didn't have to do this. They did this. We asked them to do this. They asked for an agreement. So we really do appreciate listening and taking everything that you guys ha have concerns about so that we can take into consideration. Uh, that being said, if you have any questions, call, show up at the office. We will straighten things out, All right? Thank you, guys. Yeah, I was gonna wait and see if you have pictures of it. Did you wanna take photos? Here. And there's a few that are front and back. Yeah. Well.